Hi, welcome to this lesson, which will introduce statistical data and then dig deeper into measures of central tendency. Let's get started. To begin, an introduction to statistics. Statistics are visible all around us. Averages, such as the mean, mode, and median, and charts, such as bar graphs, line graphs, and pie charts, are used everywhere, from business to sports to fashion, to media. We use statistics every day without realizing it. You have probably made some statistical statements in your everyday conversation or thinking. Statements such as, I sleep for about eight hours per night on average, and you are more likely to pass the exam if you start preparing earlier, are actually statistical in nature. So statistics is mainly concerned with uh, designing experiments and other data collection, representing and analyzing information to aid understanding, drawing conclusions from data, and estimating the present or predicting the future. So basically, gathering data, analyzing and presenting it, and then making conclusions from it. That is the science of statistics. Uh, a little bit of an international perspective. Uh, Ronald Fisher, who lived between these years here, who lived in the UK and Australia has been described as the genius who almost single-handedly created the foundations for modern statistical science. All right, let's begin uh, with data. There are two main classes of data, univariate and bivariate. Univariate data has only one variable. You can see univariate means one variable. This is an example of a data set in one variable. You can see there's just a single set of data here. And the one way, I don't know what these numbers represent, but let's say they represented the ages of uh, people in a room. Okay, so you can see we are talking about one variable, the age of people. And that kind of data is commonly presented in something called a box and whisker plot. So a box plot is a, a very common way to represent a univariate data set. Bivariate data has two variables, bi meaning two, variate variables. Okay, here's an example of a bivariate data set. We have a group of students, but we have two variables related to them. One is their classwork grade, let's say here, and their final exam grade. So you can see we have two sets of data, and when we present two sets of data, we often present them in what is called a scatter plot like this, with one axis representing one variable and the other axis representing the other variable. Okay, um, so in this lesson, though, we're going to concentrate on uh, univariate data for now. So let's say we have uh, this data about the number of cherries in 24 boxes. So, for example, in box one, there were 44 cherries. In box two, there was 43 cherries and so on. This data is said to be discrete. And we'll talk about what discrete data is in just a moment. But for now, know that this is discrete. So here we are creating what's called a frequency table. Frequency tables are a very useful way to organize and uh, present data. So here we are going to have the number of cherries. And we can say there is, it can be either 40, 41, 42, 43, and so on based on this data. Over here, we're going to have a frequency column. Frequency is just a count. It means how many times does that piece of data appear in this data set. And if we look here, 40 appears twice, so we put two here. So go ahead and fill in the rest of this frequency table for the number of cherries. Hopefully you got these numbers here. This table is in many ways more uh, useful than just the raw data like this, because in the table we can see clearly which things occur more often and so on. For example, we can see 43 cherries and 42 occur more often than the rest. All right, this next set of data is called continuous. And these are the lengths in minutes of 20 telephone calls that were made. So you can see how one call took 4.2 minutes, another call was 6.8 minutes, and on and on and on. This data is continuous. And notice the frequency table looks different as a result. In this first column, where in the previous example, we just had these set numbers, 40, 41, 42, no decimal values, nothing in between those values, because you can only have 40 cherries or 41 or 42. Here, now in the continuous data set, it's a little different. We show a uh, length of time of phone call, zero to five minutes here. Here's five to 10 minutes, 10 to 15. 
And notice here now we're using the greater than, less than symbols because this represents here phone calls that are greater than or equal to zero minutes. And here, less than five, so under five minutes. So this category represents phone calls that were between zero and five minutes including zero because of this little here, thing here, which means equal to, but not including five. All right, so in the next part of the table, the next category then is from five to 10. And now notice we do have equals for the five. So five is not included here, but it is included here. So considering that, what should be the frequency values for this table? How many phone calls are between zero and five minutes, but not including five? Okay, so 0 to 5, not including 5, is actually 5 of those. And uh, maybe you had 6, but you had 6 only if you counted this last one here as part of this category. But again, this does not e include 5, so we should not include it in that category. So the 5 minutes here, 5 minute phone call should actually be included here, and that's why this is 7, not 6. So that's an important consideration. Otherwise, know that continuous data will be represented like this, because by having this range of values, for example here, 5 to 10 minutes, it implies the value can be any value between 5 and 10, any decimal value, any fractional value, and that is continuous data. Whereas, again, back to here, discrete data, can only take on certain values and they are specified there. All right, let's take a look a little further with this. And uh, I guess my question for you then is what are the differences between discrete and continuous data? Can you answer that at this point? Let's, uh, let's answer that here. And you might want to note this down somewhere. Okay, discrete data is either data that can be counted, for example, the number of cars in a car park, or data that can only take specific values for example, shoe size. So we just saw that example with the cherries. We can count the number of cherries, one cherry or two or three. Uh, so data that can be counted or data that can only be specific values. Like shoe sizes, I think can be half sizes. For example, you could have 40.5 centimeter shoe size or a, in American system, you know, seven and a half shoe size, but it cannot be any other decimal value. It can be some decimal values like the halves, but nothing else. All right, continuous data can be measured. For example, height, weight, time. That's the easiest way to think about continuous data. It can be measured. There's some measuring tool which will allow you to measure it. For example, height can be measured using a, a ruler or some kind of other tape measure or something. Weight can be measured using a scale. Time can be measured using stopwatches or clocks, and uh, all those can be measured to uh, whatever degree of accuracy your tool allows you to, to measure to. All right, so let's summarize what we've seen so far. There is data, and we've been talking about univariate and, and bivariate, but let's talk about just now univariate data can be either qualitative, which is descriptive data, such as eye color, hair color, favorite show, and so on and so on. This is descriptive data. Or data can be quantitative. Quantitative implies numerical data. Okay, it comes from the word the same place as quantity. So numerical data, for example, shoe size and weight, like we've talked about, that's quantitative data. So in general, we concern ourselves with quantitative data. Uh, of course, sometimes we come across qualitative as well. So now under quantitative data, we're going to have two types, and we've just outlined these two, discrete data and continuous data. Those are both numerical sets of data. Discrete data, again, can be counted. In other words, it can only take on particular values. For example, shoe size would then be a discrete piece of data. Number of people in a room, for example, also discrete data. Continuous data can be measured and can occupy any value within a continuous range. For example, weight, height, and temperature. Again, those can be measured to any degree of accuracy of any number of decimal places, we can say. So it can be any value. All right, really important summary of data. Make sure you understand that. Now let's look at quantitative data and uh, continuous a little bit more. So discrete data, again, can be counted for, and continuous can be measured. So example one, uh, for discrete, number of pages in a book. Okay, we can only say number of pages as a, a certain whole number or integer, so um, that is a discrete. Example, length of string. 
Okay, if you're measuring a string, the length of a string, this is a continuous variable. We can measure it to any degree of accuracy. Uh, shoe size is discrete. Here's some example shoe sizes. Whereas temperature is continuous, we can measure again to any degree of accuracy. Example three of discrete, uh, number of people in a race. If you're counting how many people are racing, you can say 10 or 20 or 100 or 300 people. However, uh, the time taken to run the race is a continuous variable because the time can be measured to any degree of accuracy. Okay, so looking at this uh, sample here of different sets of data, I just want you to decide which are discrete, which are continuous, and do them in this order. Let's call this number one, number two. So go in this order around this circle and tell me discrete or continuous for these. I hope you were successful with that. Now let's look at these. Here we have another list of uh, types of data, or sorry, of examples of data. And I want you to categorize each as qualitative or quantitative. And for the quantitative data, go further. Tell me if it's discrete or continuous. Okay, let's go. Number one is quantitative. It's definitely numerical and it is discrete because we're counting. We're counting the number of cars. We're not measuring. Number two is quantitative and continuous. How about number three? Uh, qualitative for sure. Color is not a is not a uh, numerical value. Okay, number four. Quantitative discrete. Okay, now finish off the list and check your answer is there. Pause if you need to. Excellent. Uh, here's a, a question I want to ask. Is age a discrete or continuous variable? What do you think? This is a kind of a classic of example of showing the, the something that can happen uh, in terms of interpreting data. So here, for example, is the ages of uh, boys in a football club. And we typically give ages like this, right? When we say, how old are you? We, we give an answer as a as a single number. We don't say I'm 10.3 years old or 10.9 years old, although we can measure age that way, right? We can measure age. It can be measured to a, a very high degree of accuracy to the second or even, even more. So age can be measured. It's something that, that is quantitative and continuous. However, we typically present it in a discrete way. So what does that mean? Is age discrete or continuous? Well, it is continuous. Just because our habit is to present it as kind of in a discrete way like this doesn't mean it is not continuous. Um, all right. So, for example, if you took that then and wanted to present it in a frequency table, it would look like this, right? Here's age. This represents somebody that's 10 years equal to 10 all the way to 11, but not including 11. So basically, people. Uh, this represents the number of people in this number of boys in this list that are between 10 and 11 including 10, but not 11. And there's seven of those boys here. Or next one then was between 11 and 12, this time including 11, but not 12. There's nine of those boys and so on and so on. So there's a proper table for this data here because age is a continuous variable. However, you may often, when you see different things online or reports, you may see age presented this way in the table. This, by the way, this table does not represent the same data set. This is just a, another separate example. Let's say we had these age categories, 0 to 9, 10 to 19, 20 to 29, and so on. And you can see seven people are between 0 and 9, five people are between 10 and 19. This is okay, but mathematically it's not perfect. It's best to present continuous data this way with the greater than, less than symbols. All right, so just something to point out and be aware of. All right, we are ready for measures of central tendency. Uh, we will talk a little bit about this in just a moment.